low stress handling is, is very much a mindset. And a lot of people have a hard time dispensing with tradition. If you are lucky enough to have worked with a really good stockman and you've picked up some really good skills, that's wonderful and there's nothing wrong with tra tradition. But if you're fighting with your cattle and if things aren't working very well and things aren't easy, cattle will work for you willingly. If things aren't easy, maybe you should kind of shelve that tradition and um, think about some of these techniques that are counterintuitive. Everybody in this room has cattle. Everybody in this room works with cattle. Everybody in this room can develop the skills to become a really good handler. The problem that I see is a lot of people get stuck in a mindset that doesn't let them do anything different than they've previously done. Their minds don't have the discipline to try something that seems really odd or really wrong to them. So we need to get your minds framed up so that you can let these things happen. People generally are hardwired to behave like predators. And cattle are prey animals. So as Dr. Tom says, we have the ultimate predator taking care of the ultimate prey animal. A lot of times our behaviors are very threatening and we don't mean them to be. It just happens. If we understand some of those things that create threat, then we don't need to practice those. And, and the threat is perce or it's perceived and it's defined by the cattle. Okay? Regardless of what we're doing, it's the cattle that define whether or not they're, they're threatened. So we need to understand some of the things that create problems. I'm going to show a little piece of video that showcases some different ways that cattle feel. And, and I'll run through this video a couple times. So what do you see? What, what's an observation? This is a feedlot. Yeah, they're curious, right? About what's in their, their living room? Okay. Here's East Alley cattle. What are they doing? They're, they're 20 feet across from the other cattle you just saw. What are they doing? They're walking away. He's walking in and they're walking away. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, here's West Alley. Healthy cattle that work for the riders. East Alley. We have pen deads. Prey animals understand predators. That's what keeps them alive, right? But oftentimes we don't understand pred predators. Here's just a quick clip of how Britt tags his calves. Okay, he uses a hook just to pick up the calf. And look, the cow can always be in contact with the calf. Okay, he hangs him up. <laughs> That's the first trip to Disneyland, right? <laughs> what do people usually do? Wrestle to the ground. They grab them and wrestle them to the ground. What does a predator do? Same thing. Does a predator do this? Does a predator say, okay, I'm going to borrow your calf for a minute. You can keep your nose on it, and it's going to hang here where you can interact with it. Oftentimes, we, we get into the mindset that we're so busy and, and we've just got to get this job done. We get really sloppy in how we do it, and then we don't pay attention to when we're behaving like a predator. But if you create a good system like this that's not threatening, you've just laid a really nice foundation for this cow and this calf to work with you. Cattle also see differently than we do. They have bilateral vision, so they see circumferentially very well. We also have a little blind spot back here. Okay, and, and a lot of times it's just kind of natural or maybe a bad habit of ours to just walk up to cattle behind them and push them. And then just stay there and keep going and keep going and keep going. I call that trail gating. I mean, if you're driving and there's a, a car behind you doing that, what are you doing? Probably getting irritated, right? It's like, what are you doing back there? Cattle do that too. Maybe you're a distraction. If you want them to go that way, but you become a backwards distraction, you've just screwed up your navigation. When an animal is looking at you, it's looking at you for a reason. And it's our job to figure that out. You stay in too far behind them, and they start going, hmm, hmm, what's going on? 
and they like to follow their head. So his gait's over here, but he drove his animal to the right. Okay, if you're staying in too far behind, you're messing up your navigation. If you get too deep into their, their flight zone, if you want to call it that, or if you get too close to the animal and it feels threatened, it goes, oh God. And then you don't know to pull it, right? So if you're riding into a pen and your cattle feel threatened, again, particularly with weaned calves because they're so very sensitive, and they all do this, hello, when are you leaving? Which ones do you pull? Then when the threat subsides, this is what we're left with. All right, then the manager drives by and yells at the pen rider. Pen rider's not blind. Anybody can see that. Okay, we'll talk about creating emotional fitness in cattle. When we used to say emotional and cattle in the same sentence, people would think, oh, you need to be in a straitjacket. Emotion just means how you feel, right? There's nothing warm and fluffy about this. It's just how does the animal feel? The one on top here is looking at an open gate, right? She's in a dirt pen looking into paradise. But something is bothering her about that gate. Maybe she's been mashed through a gate before. Okay, she's apprehensive for some reason. Again, that's not the time to pressure her, but she's telling you something. Something's wrong. This animal feels sick. He's trying to hide it. Okay, if we're working in partnership with cattle, they're not evasive. I mean, they just kind of mope around and go, I'm sick. Help. Okay, that's what we want. That's an early pull. I took this with the zoom camera. I mean, you get within 50 feet of this animal and she starts shaking. I mean, we've all seen those cattle. I mean, they're ready to jump out of their skin. Sometimes creating emotional fitness can be as simple as exercising cattle. These cattle all came off of beautiful mountain ranches. They hadn't been weaned. They were highway weaned. They got to the feed yard, and if handlers don't intervene and create acclimation and help these animals understand that they're in a really good environment, they can end up like the animal I just showed you. Or if you do some really simple things that take no time and effort at all, all of a sudden they think, boy, this is good. It's Disneyland. This place is fun. Okay, simple cost-effective, no time at all. There's a lot more stressors than I've listed on this slide. And we oftentimes don't think about these things because it's just part of our normal routine. But you often have to step back and think about where the animals came from. When we have a herd like this, we think of having a leading edge, we think of having a trailing edge, and we think of having an initiator Oftentimes, the initiator is right behind the leaders, the leading edge. I think of them as the controllers of the herd. If the handler gains controllers of the controller, all of a sudden you're the leader. Let me show you what one of those initiators look like. Clint's doing some acclimation work. How's the herd responding? Oh, they're just kind of walking away, fairly quiet. Look at this one. This one is saying something, right? A good handler will read the context of that properly. He says, oh, too much pressure. Well, Clint saw that, and you saw him turn away from it and release the pressure. That animal says, I don't know about you. I'm leaving. OK, so we had a nice, calm herd moving away at a walk. And now that animal's kicked almost everybody up into a lope and has taken over the control of direction. All right, here's Clint in the feedlot. He's going to pull a little red steer. Right here. He works side to side. Okay, he's not behind him just shoving on him. Right? We talked about trail gating and that being a bad thing. Okay, he's working to the side of the animal and his focus is between the globe of that eye and the shoulder. Okay, that's the window of his target for his pressure. And so he's going to politely maneuver this animal towards the gate. OK, he gets a response from the animal. He stops his horse. He turns away and walks with the animal. OK, he's the guide, right? OK, so he's going to guide him. He's 
going to put the parking brake on. And you'll see him sweep some of these other cattle away from the gate. Now, if you watch this animal, he's got every opportunity to leave, especially when other cattle are starting to move away from his position. And he's perfectly happy staying in park. Okay, now he's got a little bit of a smoky roadblock in his way. So he says, all right, I can't see the handler. And look at him. He's, he's still, they're still working in partnership. Okay, so he's not thinking about escape because he's calm. All right, he's thinking about what does this cowboy want me to do? So very quietly, and I think of it as being polite. When you ride, you're polite. You move cattle, you release pressure. Okay, you're not ramming and jamming. Okay, you can see him kind of lengthen out the stride of his horse. That puts the stop on this animal. He gets him turned around. Again, as he starts moving, you saw him stop his horse immediately. Okay, we got the steer headed to the wrong side of the water tank, but that's no problem. Okay, so Clint's looking for his reverse gear. It's like, okay, where's reverse? Where's reverse? I know you got reverse. You know, in small steps, there's reverse. He says, okay, out the gate. Out the gate. Isn't that a nice way to pull cattle? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's, well, that's about two minutes and 33 seconds. Okay, you can do that with calves that have only been in the yard three days. You can do it with calves that have been in the yard 100 days, or with cows if you want to check them for dystocia. These calves essentially were highway weaned. They got unloaded the previous night off the truck, and that was the first time they were without their dams. These calves have good motion, a little bit of panic motion, even. She's going to dissipate that and start teaching them how to drive. She'll start rocking back and forth, working on a slide line, and she wants all the calves to turn around and walk away from her. Okay, she's patient. I mean, sometimes you stand there doing this and you feel like, oh, I must look like a jerk, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is different. But watch. It'll work. It'll work. You have to believe it'll work. You have to have the patience to do this and the discipline to do something that makes you feel odd. Okay, so we're at a minute and six seconds. Almost everybody's turned around. So a minute and 14 seconds, she has that whole group of calves turned around, heading the other direction. That is one little step, one little step of many that takes no time at all. For most of us in this room, cattle are responsible for our paychecks, right? Okay. Why do so many people beat up their cattle? Again, not on purpose, but I mean, if these cattle are responsible for our paychecks, we need to really be taking care of them, right? Conceptually, we remove threat and earn trust. If you don't do that first, cattle won't work for you. We teach cattle to take pressure. We use that as a motivator, communication tool. Okay, and when we establish our communication tools, we get the cattle to work for us. Working for you begins with the cattle being comfortable to just walk away from you, you know, with their heads down in a straight line. If you have a straight line, you can navigate. Okay, if your cattle don't do anything but go in circles, you have a tough time navigating. If we're working with cows, especially cows that have small calves, I mean, this is their living room, right? We're sacked out in their living room. Life is good. I mean, if we start shoving them around, and we start chasing them off without their calves, and we don't give them a chance to pair up, we've really set the tone for failure. Okay? Instead, we can quietly move through the herd, get everybody up, get everybody paired up, and then start on our project. Okay, we've got to do the right presentation for the context of the situation. What do we do when we drive? 
Here's the first technique that's really important. Some people have seen others do it and pattern their work after it, but most people do not do this when they drive cattle. We call it a sweeping Z, okay? Work in straight lines. Circles create circles. Circles are hard to navigate. Here's our herd. Here's our schematic herd. Sweep back and forth, back and forth, okay? If we get into the pendulum effect, which we see in some schematics, what that does is it puts too much pressure on our corners. And we can either ruin our navigation or really mess up our speed control. Instead of having a nice, even movement in our herd, we can shoot the corner or shoot the leading edge in a direction we don't want them to go. Okay? Sweep back and forth. Dogs know this. Really good dogs come hardwired to do this. And if we just let them alone and let them do their work, they are phenomenal. Back and forth. Okay, he's going flat across the trailing edge of this herd. There's a lot of cattle here. That's tough country. Okay, but if you do something they understand, you don't worry about all this mesquite. Okay, you don't worry about getting a whole posse of people to help or hinder. Okay, everybody understands what to do. Okay, here's a person on a four-wheeler, and he's bringing in a cow herd. Some of these cows have small calves, some have no calves, some have large calves. Back and forth. These are older cows. They might move a little slower. Look at the direction they're pointing. They're pointing in the direction that he told them to go, and they are just happily going towards the target. Whenever you see cattle trying to break off or cattle starting to arc, it's because of something the handler is doing. Cattle understand driving and the technique for driving very well. It's people that need discipline to practice it. And it does take practice because if you're not paying attention to the detail in your technique, it's pretty easy to soft the corners okay, and start getting squirrely with the herd. That's particularly true when you're working on a four-wheeler. Okay, four-wheelers don't make real tight corners. If you're on a four-wheeler, sometimes you need to turn backwards away from the herd to keep from sawing off your corners. So pay attention to what you're doing. And you can figure out what you're doing by what the cows are doing. What do we want to do if we want to slow our herd? Walk with the movement of the cow. Okay, speed control 101. You want to work parallel. Okay, a lot of times I'll say walk with the herd, and people are wanting to slow them down, and so they're just kind of pinching in towards the front. Right, you've all seen that? Well, that's putting more pressure on the cattle. You start decreasing that corridor, they start feeling that pressure, and then they squirt out faster. And then they say, oh, that doesn't work. Well, if you do it right, it works really well. Here's an example in a feed yard. Okay, look at the beautiful motion, okay? There's one person that's emptying this pen of cattle. And look at the motion. I mean, they're just trucking right out that gate, right? You can stop that good motion that easy. Just walk up the side. So what do we do if we want to speed up the flow of cattle? Walk opposite. Just walk opposite. This works really good in processing facilities. Okay, that's counterintuitive. All right, if you watch people work and they want to speed up these cattle, typically they go from a position like this, they walk way around and start to shove. Okay, if they just zip opposite that alley, those cattle generally pop forward. This is kind of a short clip. There's a handler inside the box, and when the truck driver zips past these cattle in an opposite direction of where they're headed, do you see how they picked up speed and just went right into that alley? You see how it sped them right up? Again, use that to your advantage. What if we want to make a turn? A couple ways you can make a turn, but one of them is you go from your driving position you swing out to the right if you want to make a left turn. As soon as you see those heads start to turn, you just continue sweeping. 
90 degrees to the direction that you want. All right, here we've got two people that are going to empty this pin for processing. Okay, they start sweeping behind the group of cattle that they want out of the pen. There we go. And again, look at the movement. Okay, it's just calm in the direction that they want. Okay, so now Don is going to pressure that outside corner a little bit. We said when the outside pressure gets cornered, it starts to turn the leading edge of the cattle. So she'll pick up her stride. Look at the movement there. That leading edge is coming around a lot faster than that inside edge. And then you see Joe swing out to straighten out the front. He'll swing out and head him right out the gate. We talk about a T to empty pins. Well, a T works to fill pins as well. That's our system of navigation. Okay. Here's a schematic for it. If you have more than one person, you want a driver and you want some guides. In this schematic, this person is concentrating on sweeping in the middle of the herd. Okay, that, that's our accelerator. Okay, we want every cow to stay with every calf and we want them all to just steadily go through the gates. Okay, we're back in Bowie, Texas. We're gonna bring the herd in. So they need to be navigated to a target and they need to keep their calves at their sides. Okay, we'd like to create motion towards our target and then keep feeding cows to the motion. But we're gonna focus on creating some motion first and then fine tune our guiding and our, our navigation once we kind of get everything headed in the, the general direction that we want. Well, if the calf says, Wah, I'm going the other way, and takes off down the fence and the cow continues on, you know, the cow will stay quiet and say, God, why are you running around when you can walk to better grass? You know, you got 99% of the herd in a calm frame of mind listening to the handler. So if you have one or two, you know, get a little off the beaten path, it's not a big deal. But usually if something happens that's less than desirable, people start going, dang, you know, and they get in that chase mode and they go flying down the fence on the four-wheeler and they start escalating panic. If these concepts are really foreign to you, the easiest group or, or class of cattle to work with are the newly weaned calves, right? They're looking for a leader. They're like, oh God, tell me what to do. You know, they've lost their leader. So they're just, they, they're a clean slate. They're going, man, somebody help me. Okay, so if you're wanting to build some skill, those are great cattle to work with. Okay, they're looking for leadership. You're looking to build skill. That's great. You know, anytime we take on something new, if we aspire to conquer the toughest achievement, usually people abandon it. And they throw the techniques out and go, forget it, not gonna work. And the one thing I have a hard time conveying to people is these things really aren't that hard. You just, you gotta work at it little by little. Little steps are big successes. Hopefully you're ready to start speaking like a cow, thinking like a cow, not acting like a cow, but getting the cows to work for you. Thank you for joining us for the first section of Speak Like a Cow, and please join us for our, our next session. We'll talk about acclimation, which is creating partnership with your cattle, and we'll talk about getting cattle threaded through obstacle courses called processing facilities. I'm Dr. Lynn Locatelli of Cattle Expressions. Come join us next time.